Hello my friends. Welcome to my cross stitch channel or what many of us call floss tube. My name is Amanda May and this is my channel all about counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and needlework in general. If you are new, I'm so happy you are here. I am the designer behind the brand Artith Design and you can find my patterns and more about me and my mission for sustainable stitching over on my website at artithdesign.com. And this week I would love to talk to you about my stitching. I have some projects that I started, some new releases I want to talk about. I'm going to do a little giveaway and yeah, all the things. I am just so happy to be here this week. The sun is out here in Maryland. Things are turning around. The snow has almost all melted. And it was a beautiful, you know, 39 degrees this morning, Fahrenheit here. So things are looking up. I, I'm, I'm happy to be here. So it is March 2nd, 2021. And this upcoming weekend is a big online wholesale needlework extravaganza in lieu of the annual yarn tree sponsored Nashville needlework market which was an in-person wholesale show that is not happening in this year and so there's been a lot of stuff happening <laughs> and one of them the cross stitch designer collaborate collaborative group and Sulky of America got together to do the project, The Moo, The Merrier. And you did not have to be part of any of the wholesale trade shows to participate in the design collaboration. So I went ahead and decided to create a design. I, <laughs> I, call, I call her Portrait of a mini Highland cow. She is stitched on a 32 count Wichelt tropical green linen. She's stitched with one strand of Sulky 12 weight cotton petites, which is the cotton thread. So one strand over two linen threads on this. The accent here is in a metallic green and that is a Sulky Polystar metallic thread. And I used two strands for that. I also included some beads, which are Mill Hill beads and size like 11 and 12 beads. And if you don't wanna use beads, you can always just like do French knots or colonial knots instead of the beads. There are no, <sighs> I don't know, I would say if you've never beaded before, this could be considered intimidating, but there's um, some back stitching and the metallic and the, I want, I was going for here, one of the, like the Elizabethan ruffled collars, like that you would see in a traditional portrait. But I also wanted to think about the fields and the pastures. <laughs> I almost went so far as to have little crop circles in there, but I thought that was just going a little too out there. <laughs> so I'm really excited with how she turned out. And again, she's a miniature Highland cow. There are some breeders and some beautiful cows that are being uh, born and created here in the United States. Uh, Wisconsin has miniature Highland cows and they're so cute. Someone told me that this looked like a dog and not a cow, but I, I wasn't getting the longness of her. I was like like the photograph of her straightforward looking at you or a painting as it were. And of course you don't have to use that bright, bright green. You can choose something else. I finished this on a kitchen trivet. This is called the Michelle Garrett method or the Bendy Stitchy method. She taught me all about cast iron trivets and so I thank her for her inspiration. The bow, I have to thank Java Girl Stitches and her bow tutorial for teaching me how to make the big beautiful bows. 
and to add the little floral picks or greenery. So that's all her. Then I have to thank for finishing tips, uh, Jennifer Upton, uh, Upton Stitches. She showed some really cool tinsel trim that she got from one of the big box stores that sells, you know, the Christmas stuff. And so she bought a bunch of this to make into <laughs> like the, uh, the embellishments for smalls. So those three, Bendy Stitchy, Java Girl Stitches, and Upton Stitches are all floss tube or YouTube channels here on YouTube. And they have episodes going back a couple years. Um, I think Christy's got about 30 episodes and she is a very prolific finisher. So if you are interested in seeing some really gorgeous finishing, I would definitely uh, go check her out. Uh, Upton Stitches, she's she is, her needle is on fire. She is constantly creating. So she's really cool to see <laughs> all of her projects. And then Michelle is really awesome in terms of showing you on screen, well, products and what she's talking about. And she's really into uh, cross stitch and advocacy. So there's different floss tube channels all over YouTube and uh, wonderful stitchers and needle workers to check out. So I digress. So here is my little cute, my little cute cow. And again, finished on a trivet. What I did, it's, I popped the tile out. Then I used the existing, the template of the tile and I, traced it on acid free mounting, like um, the mounting backing board that's acid free. And then I used stitchery tape on all four sides on the back and I, and then stretched it to have it all equal in. I decided not to lace this piece as it was so small. The back of it, I'm gonna show you, is not as glamorous. But here I've attached the bow kind of through that back trivet. Here you can hang it. And then I attached so the backer board here so you can't see it. I can go back through here if I wanted to and add a decorative scrapbook paper. I just need to trace and get the it approximately put on and then glued on properly. And then I need to <laughs> put the date and that this is a model for the Move the Merrier cross stitch collaboration. So that is my contribution, but wait, there's more. I was so excited and I actually was going to release with that four, uh, three other fully finished, fully stitched <laughs> pieces, but life got in the way. So I don't have the mo finished models to show you um, because all I have are the digital renderings, but I think that's good enough. <laughs> so here is what the printout of my pattern looks like. It is available for shops to order, uh, online needlework stores and local needlework shops to order through ICG Crafts, which is a wholesale distributor. Uh, this is my draft of the pattern and <laughs> my art, my, uh, author copy. So here is what kind of looks what uh, looks like here. If you wanted to have the other four, I did a sampler style and it's called Count the Creamers. And it is part of, loosely part of my series, my Count the Cups here that I have. Count the Cups. And then in the back here, I have up there, near my Barbara Anna Fox, I have uh, Count the Saucers. So this is Count the Creamers, and I use the same Sulky Thread Pack color palette for the other three designs. Then there's the Moo the Merrier Stitch, and those are milk jugs, stitched um, back stitch or black work. Here, moo, more stitching, more stitching. So it is a traditional, like the porcelain ceramic uh, coffee, the cow creamers. And then there is the sampler that you would, the backstitch lettering that you would put on the top over your stitches. My recommendation for that is uh, you use a tapestry needle to lay down all your white stitches. 
I suggest a size 24 or a size 26 tapestry needle when you're working with the 12 weight silky thread. And then over the top, you could use a embroidery um, or a chenille needle that has a sharper point. So you can puncture through to put the back stitching of the, the all the letters here. And you could do it either in the cotton or you could do two strands of that polystar metallic like in a blue. And I offer both of those suggestions in my pattern. So all four of these are charted uh, 64 by 64, which means 64 stitches wide by 64 inches high or tall. So you can stitch this on a 16 count Ada or 32 count even weave, a Lugana or linen, like an even weave. And the, your approximate design size, your finished design size would be four inches by four inches. Now, you could stitch this on monk's cloth, which is a 10 count fabric. You could stitch this on 40 count fabric. I don't recommend it though. The highest count fabric I would recommend that you stitch with the 12 weight cotton threads is a 32 count. I say the sweet spot is a tight 28 count fabric. And what I mean by tight 28 is fabric a lot of times that have been over dyed. A 28 that's been over dyed might tighten up and instead of being a 28 count fabric like it originally was, it tightens into like a 29 or 30 count fabric. Does that make sense? So a tight 20, a 28 to a 32 count, somewhere in there in between is I think the sweet spot for stitching with one strand of sulky. If you're gonna do a 10 count fabric or an 11 count, I think that Tula fabric is 11 count, you're gonna probably wanna use two or three strands of sulky. So three strands of sulky would be the equivalent of one six strand piece of DMC. So you wouldn't even, you know, separate the strands. You would just use that whole six strands. Well then for sulky, it would be three strands. And you could play with it. I also wanna say that the count the creamers here, I did include, it's not just cow creamers. So there are little backstitched uh, cashew nuts. The French knots can either be, can be soybeans or <laughs> almonds or kernels, little grains of rice because you can get an, or oat, you know, think of all the different um, nuts and legumes that can be milked and you can have <laughs> cream out of it. So just something to consider. So all the different types of creamers. And then, yeah, so that is, uh, the color there is 1147, 1174. I always get all kerfuffled. Well, you might just have to get the thread pack or my pattern to find out. Christmas red is 1147. Okay, so <laughs> that is my new release and it's called um, the Cow Collection. And did I even put the front pattern, Peach? This is what the actual, <laughs> that's the cow, the cow Collection. That's what it looks like. More stitching. So there we go. Awesome. I have a bunch of new starts this week new cross stitch starts, meaning I thought about starting something and I did. I was fortunate enough, I made an, a, an, a thread order with 123 Stitch, which is an online needlework shop. They're based out of Utah. I made a, an order and was I, I ordered my DMCs and a piece and uh, some fabric to, <laughs> to work on my new project and it is I'm trying to get the cover page to show you it is by Jira like Geisha get Jira, Jira here's her name she is a Japanese designer she's got some wonderful work I have admired this pattern for a couple of years on creative poppy is where I or electronically ordered and downloaded the chart and it's called um, 
the baby boar and Japanese flowers and then the there's a little the bird is a sparrow or forget-me-not pincushion so I decided to start the the baby boars and I started it on this piece of fabric and it's um like a dark blue the fabric tag came off here we go it's a 32 count and I started in the top center of the pattern. I just got a piece of eight or a nine by 13 and I started center, top, center, middle, and then I'm going to work down. I got all of the, I'm using all of the call for DMC and I didn't have a, as many as I had hoped I had in my own stash. I, these are the ones I had on bobbins. These are the ones I ordered and I put them all on my thread drops that I made. So what I did, I did the method where you take your full skein of DMC. I wrote on my little thread drop what the number was. And then I took it all, the, the little pa papers out and then folded it, folded it again, folded it again and then pulled up the ends, cut the edge the ends on both sides, and then attached it here. So that's how I did it. And I'm really excited for this project. The, 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 this piece of fabric and my floss came in yesterday. So I was able to start this project in conjunction with uh, the <laughs> hashtag Stitch Asia or hashtag uh, diversity and inclusion, S-A-L, uh, S-A-L stands for stitch along. So people are virtually stitching along all over the world uh, in order to bring awareness to Asian designers, dyers, vendors, artists, and you know, to remind everyone that the, our Asian American Pacific Islander and our, our Citizens and people from Asia and Southeast Asia are very uh, wonderful and important to us and we should honor them. And with that, I decided to make a little craftivist, like activist and crafts, craft, crack, craftivist pattern. And I have it up already if you would like to stitch it. And it is called Stop the Xenophobic Rhetoric. I was inspired to create this uh, based on the white and blue uh, pottery. And I did add some traditional elements, um, the crane, some stylized lanterns, blue flowers and the pagoda or the pavilion. I chose to make this in light of the exponential rise in hate crimes and hate language, xenophobic language or othering, the othering of our the citizens, uh, Asian American and Pacific Islanders here in the United States. Uh, unfortunately, the United States has a history of xenophobic rhetoric and it needs to stop. Full stop. <laughs> so here is my a contribution to the Stitch Asia. I am not affiliated. I, this is, I was inspired by the movement. So I created this. It is, I, I charted it all in different blue tones of DMC, but it could be done whatever colors or that you would like. I just did a digital rendering on like a 14 count Ada, but it could be done on whatever you'd like. So that, those are my two new releases. This is just electronic uh, on, on my website. I'll have the link below. Okay, what else have I done? Okay, I worked a little bit on my Strawberry Fields Forever. I worked on it long enough to this is what it looks like 
Strawberry Fields Forever. This is by Blackbird Designs. I'm doing it with all the called for colors and the called for fabric. And I worked on it just long enough to make a mistake, rip out my mistake, and then politely put it away. It is wrinkled because I do stitch in hand. And let me see if you can see where I got. I'm gonna take my needle minder off so I can show you better. Okay, here we go. I'm using one strand of the Gentle Art sampler threads over two linen strands. And this is a 37 count fabric. This is the first time I've ever stitched on a 37 count fabric and it's been lovely. I got this half of the gate and I started working on the gate and I miscounted here so I had to rip out. And so I'm back again here to the gate and I need to work on it some more. One Two of the greens look exactly the same. So I'm just, I substituted out and I'm just using the Gentle Art Moss everywhere instead of the Lexington Green or vice versa because it the, the colors literally are the same. So it's okay. I'd like to get this done. I finished the Yellow Submarine a couple years ago and then so Strawberry Fields. It would be nice. It would be nice to have that done. I worked on oh no this is a new start so my my daughter and I both have uh February birthdays and so in honor of her birthday I started the violet sampler by the drawn thread I got this sampler off of eBay and it came as a full kit so it came with the fabric the pattern the charms and the silks. And I had never used these silks before. There's a Karen Water Lilies and then there's a Soile d'Alger. The Soile d'Alger is a part of a Krynik, which is a, they, most people know Krynik for their metallic threads, but they do silks as well. And they're out of West Virginia. So he, this is what this pattern looks like and it's, it's lovely. <laughs> so it's got a gold dragonfly charm. It's got little tiny amethyst hearts that go in here. There's a bunch of specialty stitches and the fabric is called lavender mist. And that fabric is put out by Wichelt. I need to actually go onto their website and see if that is a fabric that they still produce or if that has been discontinued. I say that because I like the fabric and if it's still available, I think it would be a beautiful fabric to design with. All right, so it is a, it's called Lavender Mist and I have a shameful start, but I wanted to show this to you and the importance of reading directions. So this is charted and suggested that you stitch this on a 32 count fabric. Well, the kit, it came with a 28 count fabric. The directions also said to use one strand of silk over two linen threads on a 32 count. This is, came as a 28 count. I started it and my first stitches I did, I used one strand of silk. I don't like the way one strand looks on 28. So then I tried the fill in with two strands here and love that. So now I've got to figure out if I'm gonna just go over and just over stitch one all the way around or if I rip it out and then restitch it with two strands. I think I'm gonna just go back through and do a duplicate X over the existing X to fill that in. So there, this has a an alphabet it's got the specialty stitches with the violets and the charms in the center. And then the bottom of the chart, it says, now fades the last of winter's snow and thick by ashen roots, the violets grow. So lovely. So I'm really excited I started this. I wish I would have gotten a little further, but that's okay. 
I do print out a, a working copy and I print it out on a cardstock, which is like a 110 weight cardstock so that it stands at attention and I can use my highlighter to mark off my spaces as I stitch. All right, we're at the pile part where it's gonna be giveaway time. And in order to enter, you've gotta say rooster, R-O-O-S-T-E-R, -O -O -E rooster, in a sentence. I like to wake up by the sound of the rooster crowing. I like pumpkin colored roosters. I don't know, think of something or just say rooster, period, <laughs> your comment. Be over 18, uh, United States only. I'm sorry, the shipping is atrocious. I'm just doing United States, but please know my international viewers and listeners, I love you. Okay, okay. So over 18, United States, you have to be a subscriber. I'm literally, I sort through if you're a subscriber or not. So you've gotta be a subscriber and I would love it if you liked the video. That's not required though, but being a subscriber is. So in order to win, you are going to, you're going to use the word rooster and you are going to win these two items. Cross stitch all of the cows and the official, the moo the merrier double-sided tote. Now, full disclosure, there is a printing error on the back of this, if you can see. And also, this is an author copy. This is not available to purchase on Amazon. Uh, the one on Amazon is due to licensing issues. It doesn't have the logo or anything else on it. So it's different. So you will be getting like the one and only, the Moo the Merrier Cross Stitch Collective with the logo author copy and the tote. This tote is no longer available for sale. This is my tote that I am gifting in the giveaway. So if you wanna get these two items, you it they're gonna to come together. Say rooster, and I'll ship them to you. And with that, you know, check out everyone else's cow designs. There's some awesome, awesome, awesome. It's so awesome. <laughs> so rooster. Rooster. Okay. The next thing I want to show you is I have a finish, albeit a small one, and I don't have it ready, like charted and ready for sale. I just want to show you where I'm at with it. I finished my little sloth. Isn't she so cute? Now, I finished with the punch needle embroidery. Someone asked me, why do you do, why do you have to invert your design and punch from the back? Well, you punch from the back to create the loops into the front. So if you were to, to punch it right side out, like, so if this was the right side up, then your punches would be backwards and it would be on this side. So you, you want to have your fluffies. So that's why you have to invert. I finished full punching. And then what I did is you take your Aileen's craft glue or similar fabric glue. I like Aileen's tacky glue and I put a thin layer across all of it. I make sure it's like squared up. And then if you look, you can see it's, it's dried. I don't want to say it's crusty, but it's dried so that I don't accidentally pull and unravel part of the punch needle. It's secure. All right. Then I cut and I left this either to mount it onto a board or a mat or to make it into a pillow. And I decided to use my batik, which is an Asian styled printing method with using the resist and the wax and the dyes. So I'm going to have this uh, as the back and I'm gonna make this into a little pillow and there will be pom poms because I cannot resist a good pom-pom. I mean, seriously. So keep your eyes out for this. I also just wanna say, these big loops will be trimmed and cut and for the hibiscus, the center part. So this this will look different when it's finished. Ah, so exciting. 
Isn't she so cute? Look at her little face. <laughs> okay. The next thing I have, I'll show you what I got, my Happy Meal. So I bought the pattern for the Barbara Anna. I had to do it. She's my favorite designer, all the things, right? So I ordered all the DMC because I didn't have it. She She's using a different like brown yellow color palette than her, than her other ones that I've worked on from her like right here the fox and I have a mermaid but you can't see it in camera frame so I got all the called for DMC and then I ordered some um nine by 13 pieces of fabric for my own personal stitching I made a bit of a mistake and that's okay because uh I accidentally ordered I thought I was ordering one piece, but I ended up ordering two separate pieces. One is a Lugana and one is a linen. Uh, and I can officially say, I don't see a difference. And I don't feel a difference. The texture doesn't even feel different. So Yeah, and they both say the same thing. It's different pattern numbers, everything. I don't I don't know, maybe it was different dye lots or different timing. Anyway, doesn't matter. I have two pieces. And then I ordered this one, and this one is the Splash Light Mint Lugana with the white. And I thought these look like the little the speckled eggs like for Easter. And then I got the uh the Petite Point 32 count blue white Belfast linen. Here, this is what I meant. This one was different. So I ordered two of the same. One is Lugana and one is Linen to see the difference. Um, anyway, I ordered two of two fabrics. It's okay. They were on sale. They were about $3.50 a piece for the 9 by 13s I can't guarantee that price though now. So I th that was my Happy Meal. DMC threads and some fabric. I think I might do the Kitty Cat on I was thinking it might look cute on the white with the blue speckles we'll see and I'm still working on Halloween kitty cat so I'm, I also talked about putting that on putting this pattern on the same purple as uh, as my other kitty cat I don't know though I think I'm gonna do it differently did I get far, far along on this I worked on the Marie La Twinette I did I got some of her necklace done so Marie La Twinette is a pattern by Peacock and Fig. And she's so cute. So I got her necklace done. And this has been a real joy to stitch. And I really like Dana, the designer, her color palette. I think it's really lovely. And a lot of the colors that I like, like the pinks and the yellows and the purples, my retractable highlighter make sure you retract it I say that because I'm gonna show you why I say that later in a minute so I got her necklace done so I'm working over and I'm gonna try to work up and get her face in and then work down and over you can see right here is my page break I had asked Dana when she had asked me to review this before she published it if she could include the full pattern like on one page knowing that it'll be hard to read the symbols, but just to see what the pattern lay layout looks like on one page. And she told me that her design software program doesn't allow her to put it all on one page. So I literally have, I cut and taped and I'm pie piecing all of them together just to make sure <laughs> I get it right. You know, we, so many different and awesome design softwares out there. People too use different editions um, and different companies and of course uh, differences between using a PC and an iOS map all the things I worked on sunflower bouquet I'm sorry I did not grab the original it's out of the magazine the um, cross stitch in uh, country magazine and this is what happens when your kid plays with your highlighter and then doesn't retract it but I'm so excited. I got all of the 
sunflowers put in and I'm starting on the back stitching. So I got the back stitching done here. And so I'm working my way because I stitch in hand. So I'm, I'm moving from right to left, like towards me. So I've added this back stitching. I need to get all in the middle here and down and here, get all the back stitching in. And then I'm going to give it a bath, hoping that I can get some of the staining out. And if I can't, that's okay. I will forever have a memory of my son helping me with cross stitch. And worst case scenario, I can always give myself a real close finish too. This is as a sampler. I'm not stitching the whole sampler. It was just the center motif. I love it using all the called for DMC threads. And then, then I have a start. I forgot the book. The book is by Blackbird Designs. It's a book, a quilting book. But in the quilt book, it has like rug hooking, punch needle, and two different cross stitch patterns. One of which is the one I started. And I have my working copy again on number 10, 110 cardstock taped down, keeping track. And oh my gosh, I say all of that. You know what's in this bag? I, I didn't know because I don't have my vinyl bag. I like vinyl front bags as a visual learner, so I know what I have. This is the book, Tending the Garden. I have this book linked in my full idea list, Blackbird Designs. The link is below, Tending the Garden. I want to learn how to do some of these beauties too. So this is on. <laughs> this is on an X Jude fabric that I ordered from Kitten Stitcher's website. And then I am pulling the flosses as I go. I ended up going into another Blackbird finish I had, which was Fairy Garden. I finished it and I had the hopes of putting several of that garden series next to each other on the piece of fabric that I had. Well, it, I haven't done it in a year. So I went and I pulled the, fa I pulled the flosses, um, the antique rose, the dried thyme, the burlap. And so I grabbed those and then I have added in, these are the Halloween, limited edition Halloween X Jude color palettes. So, so far in that I've added Friday number six and Saturday number seven. And I also have uh, gold and this was a uh, piece I got from that prize package from Just Cross Stitch for their winning their ornament contest. Um, so I'm, and then I'm gonna pull from these as I go. But here, let me show you how far I've gotten. That's exciting. Okay, I am using, is it one strand? One strand on 36 count. And that's how far I've gotten. I'm so happy. I love it. So um, that orange is that X Jude, but everything else is pretty much called for. The carriage black, all of that, that's the called for colors for the bird. Let me show you. Um, this is what it looks like. So I feel like I'm honoring their style and inserting just a little bit of my own. So I'm excited. Yay! So that is my start. This is uh, my birthday start. Cause I had, I had a, I had a horrendous birthday. Um, it was awful. It started badly and ended with, in my um, art studio with my roof partially collapsing and I had to move all my stuff out of my art studio and we're waiting on the roof and all that stuff. So it has been very difficult, but I am here. I'm here to talk about cross stitch. I'm here to talk about inclusivity and diversity in cross stitch. And I would like to say that I am against bullying in cross stitch. 
and I'm against white supremacy in cross-stitch. And with that, I will say thank you so much for being a part of my channel <laughs> and hanging out with me. I would love it if you liked and subscribed if you have not already. The keyword is rooster if you would like to be entered in the Moo the Merrier. Um, obviously, there's a lot of new things coming out because of the upcoming wholesale show. So if you can purchase awesome i am not here and my channel is not about encouraging you to go into debt or to feel like you have to purchase things i just want to share the love and joy of cross stitch and and connect with fellow stitchers so with that thank you uh, i love you take care and happy stitching <laughs>